Okay, here. Sarah. Here. What we're doing is instead of the regular conversation happy thing, we will do the uh, main child reader this week. You'll be the reader, child can write, and we'll do a response at the end of the class. Okay, and then the invitation, I will take care of. And then I'm going to do a children's nursery tour. And then we'll switch to And they are going to be nasty. No, don't do that. Right. Okay? Right. All right. All right. We'll switch that in the regular way. Okay? Great. Thank you, Sarah. Let's go on. I'm gonna, we're going to talk by the tree. So you can like have them go in the first and second row over here. No, I don't want. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Things are a little hectic as we get used to doing some new things around here. From now on, at least when I'm pastor, we will be doing message by the tree or on the steps or whatever. Um, so that the children get used to coming to church, being in service with adults. And then I will do a little message about whatever is going to be um, like today is the lighting of the Advent candle. And then they, they will leave after the message, children's message, and then we will do our scriptures. It's not in the bulletin. I apologize. I do a lot of cut and pasting, and it was something new, so I've got forgotten. Um, so, and. The other thing is, I will be very blunt. The words to the songs are not on the screen. I am still recovering. And anybody who's ever had to do it, you literally, you literally have to type the words to the songs into the computer when it's up on the board to get it in PowerPoint. And I was just too tired to do it this week. So, uh, yeah, there's that. We got the kids, we got that. Other announcements. Um, I don't have a bulletin. Anyway, so we have the, do we have the announcements up there? Go ahead. Our annual White Elephant Christmas party is on December 16th, which is a Saturday going to be at noon so that we can drive there and drive back in the daylight. I learned on my recent trip I should not drive at night. <laughs> it was by the grace of God that I got home, I'm telling you. Back to the white elephant gag gift exchange. Find something in your house that is silly that you would like to uh, either voiced off on or share with someone else. Okay, we'll be at the Mexican Fiesta restaurant in Canton. And I'm not sure that, yes, Ford Road in Canton. They won't seat us until there's at least 10 people there because we're signed up for 20. Um, and they have a surcharge Apparently they have a surge, um, <laughs> but it will surge their bill right up and over the top. They have a surcharge for credit cards, so bring cash. I wrote this, so it's my bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the Consistory Christmas Gathering uh, is coming right up, and that will be under discussion. Um, I can take that one. Okay. The Consistory Christmas Gathering? Yeah, kind of. I, I talked with people last night. 
Oh, good. We'll circle back to that. Meanwhile, charging on, the monthly mission is the reverse advent calendar. So instead of getting some little something every day, you are giving out canned goods. Uh, we support the Helping Hand Food Pantry, and uh, we will collect all, uh, all this on the back table. Also, we are still collecting diapers for baby Jesus. I see some people have uh, already started donating. Now, you were going to talk about the Consistory Christmas okay, at, As it stands right now, and Jimmy can correct me, it looks like we will be meeting at the, on the 9th at Jimmy's house. And uh, we'll get some a little bit more further details. Um, at what time, Jimmy? Six. At 6. We're going to discuss the time. We're going to discuss the time. The I don't, okay, so we're just having a small one today and the other one tomorrow next week? Okay, cool. So, I see we have a non-visitor here today. Yay! 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 Welcome back. It's such a, it's such, isn't it a joy when a long lost friend comes back in your view and you were sorely missed, my friend. Just wanted you to know that for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, so we have if, I know we're, we're, we're low on people, but just let me know if you are interested in helping um, in rotating in the Sunday school in the year come. We've got two people already, so that helps quite a bit, and we appreciate it. Our wonderful senior pastor is working midnights this weekend, and uh, So I don't think she, she said she was going to try to make it. It doesn't look like she did. So I get to run the show. Yay. Yay me. All right. If you will all stand and get ready for our opening hymn, number 171, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
You may be seated. As is, you know, as most of you know, this is the first Sunday of Advent. And this year's kind of neat because it falls four Sundays before Christmas, duh. But Christmas Eve, we'll be lighting the last candle of Advent and the Christ candle. But today we start out with hope. We kindle, we're lighting the first candle of Advent. And you, God people, <laughs> should read the response. Come and grow to break through the reign of compassion, justice, and peace. We remember times we long for God to be present to us, this congregation and this world. We recall a member or family, a member of family, describe a time they prayed for God to come, heal, or bring peace. Okay, well, I'm supposed to describe that. Uh, I have a person who is very, very close to me. She is my best friend. I just went to visit her in Indianapolis. She's my buddy, Beth. Uh, my kids call her Auntie Beth. And um, sometimes she is in unremitting pain. And I would like to light this candle in hopes that that can be overcome for her right now. The prophet Isaiah also cried to God to tear open heaven and come down. He called God's people to do the right. Isaac called them to refer the clay of God, God, the potter. This advent we call out to God. Join me in the invocation. Mighty God, creator of the world, break through all that keeps you from you. We ask for your mercy and reform us in your image. This Advent, visit us with your justice, love, peace, and hope. Amen. See if we can do this without breaking anything. No. All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning. We all sitting up so bright for our weekend. Well, it's okay to be under the chair as long as you're in God's house, right? Okay. What did I say this was? This is the first Sunday of what? Advent. Advent. Very good. We don't do it, do we? <laughs> Advent. That's right. What does Advent mean? Anybody guess? What do you think it might mean? You don't know? When I was your age, I didn't know either. Advent means a season of waiting. What are we waiting for? Come on, somebody else. What? No, that's baby Jesus. Right on the button. Thank you. This is the time that we as Christians light candles every Sunday, four Sundays before Christmas. And we do that and we discover four very important traits of Christianity and what Jesus brings to us. Right? Say yes or make me feel better. Right? Okay. Annie, if you don't sit up, I'm going to start asking you questions. <laughs> and then there too. Yeah, that's trouble. Alright, now. This candle we lit today was the candle of hope. What does hope mean? 
Udah saja Ya nih Yes, believing something's going to happen, right? Or you want to happen, right? Like, um, what do you hope for for Christmas? Anybody? I love it, yes. Huh? Wait, uh, what do you hope for? You hope to put up your tree. Yeah, that's all of the hope. Do you hope to get something under the tree? Like presents? Do it? Do you? I do. I do. I never grew up. <laughs> right? Good job. I love that. Hope. When we talk about hope in Advent, it is like we are hoping or we are believing for the baby Jesus to come and save us. Does the baby save us? Not the baby, no. I've got a little five-month-old baby. She doesn't do a whole lot. But she giggles and laughs and cries a lot. But when, when you're a baby, you can't do anything. But it's what that baby does when he grows up, isn't it? Right. And we know that Jesus is coming to save us is what is important. But he can't come if he doesn't. If it can't save us, if he's a baby first. And we know the stories that the wise men come and the shepherds come and there's a bright star in the sky. And all that's really cool to make sure everybody knows that that's just such a baby, right? But while we're waiting for all that to happen, we have to have hope. And we are hoping and we are believing in the hope of God. And who is the hope of God? Annie. The Jesus, that's right. Very good. So what today is what? The first Sunday of? All together. Advent. Very good. And what is this Sunday? We focus on hope, right? Okay, let's take a second to take a prayer before we go to class, okay? Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with these children today as they go back to their class and make their advent calendar. As they go through school this week, keep them safe and bring us back next week. Amen. Thank you, children. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we hate, weren't they? Okay, and now, Miss Sarah, you can read the scriptures, please. And thank you. The first reading is Isaiah, the second chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 5. This is the word that Isaiah, son of Amar, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills, all the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, so the house of the Lord of Jacob, to the house of the Lord of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is already the moment for you to wake from sleep. 
for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk decently as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in illicit sex and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The Gospel reading today is from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. 36 through 44. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, <clears throat> until the day of Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field and one will be taken away. Two women will be grinding meal together and one will be taken and the one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, the owner of the, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The word of God. So, I enjoyed my time with the kids. And I think as we go along and they get more comfortable, we're gonna learn more from the kids sometimes than we teach them, don't you think? We got a bright group here and as we grow, I think it's, it'll be wonderful for them and us. So getting on to the point, what does hope mean? Well, I looked it up at dictionary.com and hope is commonly used as a means or a wish. To wish, to want, to desire. Hope is, a, according to Bible, BibleDictionary.com, hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his provisions and his power and his obviously hope. It's interesting that today is a dark and dreary day because it's days like this that it's hard to remember, to hope. It's easy to sit there and dwell in the misery. Trees are gone, the leaves are gone, the flowers are gone. When I lived in Tennessee and we were driving back up to move up here, back to Michigan, to take care of Tom's dad, and as we're driving down the expressway, I try to remember my feelings about Michigan. And all that came to mind was gray. A lot of times the weather in Michigan is gray. When you live in the city, you see a lot of gray pavement. It's just gray. That's all I could come up with. Although I grew up here in Michigan and had wonderful, wonderful, sunny, bright summer days at a lake that we lived on, 
remembering crisp, clear walks in the snow. The fall leaves, none of that would come to me because at that time, I didn't want to come back to Michigan. I left it for a reason. But now that we've been back for 11 years, I'm beginning to love this state. Today, not so much. But you know what? I have hope. I have expectations. I know that someday, in the next three months, we will see the sun again. We will see snow. Now my lungs don't let me be out in it much anymore, but I do love snow. Usually I love snow from the 1st of December to the 1st of January. But crunching in that so now when I see a day like this, I remember it's a day. Now we may have a two or three or four or five of them in a row, maybe a couple weeks, but it will come to the end. And I know, I have hope, I believe that sunshine bright will happen again in Michigan. But what is important today as we light the hope candle. It's not so much that we have hope that the sun comes back, but that we hope and we know and we're expecting and believing that Jesus is coming back. Yes? I'm glad Sarah told of her friend Beth. She has a disease that is a long-suffering disease. Yet she, I would assume, being that she's Sarah's friend, takes joy when she can get it. And she probably smiles and makes jokes when she doesn't feel like it. Because she has hope that one day she'll be out of that pain. And whether it's on earth or in the next realm, she will be out of pain. My daughter hoped for eight years. She didn't give up, she pouted a lot, but she hoped for eight years for a baby. And everybody in this church knows she got it. And I, I'm not being too biased in saying she is one of the most beautiful babies on this planet. Being the grandma doesn't mean anything. Um, but she saw her hope realized. A friend was over the other day, well, the baby's other grandmother, was over the other day, and she's like, I've never seen Bridget more content than when she's got that baby on her hip. She comes home from work, she takes the baby, plants it on her hip, and she goes. That is a vision of what hope can be, the realization of it. We've all had hope about someone or something that didn't come through. And that's devastating. But my mom got cancer and she was gone in six months. All of those six months, I had hope. I believed. I knew God was going to make a miracle because you can't take my mama. It was me and mom against the three boys and dad. And we beat them. Ha <laughs> ha. No. Anyways, um, it was a really hard time. Tom had a, what you might say, a vision or a dream that said, told him that, you know, it won't be long before she's cured, healed. 
The only problem was the healing came in death. This week will mark 40 years since I lost my mom. She died on December 6th, which is one of the reasons I dress so goofy this time of year. Because Christmas was my mom's favorite time of year. She looked forward to it all year long, and she was taken from me during Christmas season. So even though I'm in my 60s, I still dress like a little kid at Christmas. But what's my point? The hope of Christ will never disappoint you. The hope that he's coming back, that he's going to take us up to his father, the hope that right now, if you pray and you ask him to, you'll be saved. He will take you before the throne of God and stand up and be your advocate. Can you imagine Jesus being our quote-unquote lawyer? Think about that. Jesus is our advocate. His coming a second time will usher in a time of hope. Hope? It depends on how you interpret Revelation. It will usher in a time of the end. And eventually, the hope that we will have our time in heaven with God for eternity. Hope. For several years, I was hoping to get my eye transplant. Well, the cornea transplant. And we're talking years. And I finally got it. Almost life get lost my life getting it, but I got it. And I can already see better. So I don't have to hope for better vision in my left eye anymore. I've got that. And guess what? You don't have to hope for the love of Jesus. You've already got it. The love of Jesus is with us every day, comforting us, hugging us spiritually, loving us, guiding us. Right now in this world, in some countries, it's very hard to have hope, isn't it? War is destroying the very streets that Jesus walked on. Houses and families are destroyed because there are people out there that don't want the hope of God. They want to destroy everybody but themselves. That's nothing new. It's been this way for the beginning of time, practically. And sometimes, and here's the point, sometimes it's too hard for someone to have hope for themselves. And for that reason, we need to pray and have hope for them. Thinking the other day as I was whining and complaining because, oh, it hurt. It may have hurt, ouch, but it doesn't hurt deep down.
different type of hope message. But I want you to remember this because we have dark days coming. And we will have days again when the sun will be shining and everything in our little world is perfect and we can be happy and hopeful and joyful. And I'm not making fun of that. I'm excited for those times. But what I want you, each and every one of you, to put in your heart is that even on the dark days, when nothing is going right, when you don't know where the rent's coming from, when you don't know how, where you're going to eat next, that may not mean new people here, maybe somebody out there watching, but it could be somebody right here in your congregation that's afraid to speak up. We don't know. But in the dark days, remember the hope that Christ is coming back and that Christ is here and he is our sunshine. He is our savior. When I'm down, when I'm frustrated, I have a little thing I say that helps bring the hope back in my heart. And it's really easy, but it helps us to remember things. I say, God of heaven, creator of all. Jesus Christ, savior of all. Holy Spirit, helper of all. Come to me and help me in this time of need. And you know what? I can't really say every time because I don't know for sure. But most times when I do that, and I do it in a prayerful way, I feel the peace and the joy and the hope of Christ in my heart. And it calms me and helps me. Hope, what did I say that was? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hope is a confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength in his promises. Don't lose hope. How many times have you heard that? Don't lose hope. For Jesus is hope. And he's coming. So take that little candle and put it in your heart and remember to hope this week. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for your many blessings to us. Accept now our tithes and offerings and use us and our gifts for your kingdom. Amen. Okay, I only have, you may be seated, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm seated, you might as well be. Do I have any more prayer requests? Yeah. Obviously, number one on our list is continued prayers for Harry. He is still in the hospital, and we ask that you pray for him and Kathy and her family. <laughs> because this is a time when, we need, when she's caring for him. You have someone in the hospital that's wearing on the people, the relatives as well. So pray for healing. Pray that maybe we can get him home for Christmas. 
I miss my Irish hugs. I don't know how many other girlfriends he's got in here, but that's that. Phyllis, for everyone in the Wayne Westland school system, yes. what's going on there? Oh my goodness. The Westlands, Wayne Westland School District mysteriously lost $28 million. Yes. Wayne Westland? So there's a whole bunch of people going to be laid off, transferred, eliminated, so they're going outsourced. And what else? What else? Well, Unfortunately, right here at the holiday time, a bunch of people will lose their jobs. The children will suffer, as usual. They usually do. They're the first to suffer. Programs. Cutting programs, everything. So we need a miracle. Westland needs a, Westland and Wayne School District need a needs a major miracle. Okay. Anybody else? I just want to ask you for continued prayers for me. <laughs> Last week was three days straight of doctors and tests and more coming this week. Um, I have a heart monitor. Yay, I love those things, not. They think they know what's going on. Thank the Lord it will be an easy fix if it comes to be true. Like I already said, I got so excited today because I was putting my contact in, my left, right, right eye, so I didn't have a glasses on or anything. And on TV, something jumped up and I closed my eyes and I could read it. <laughs> so I truly feel that God has blessed me with a miracle. Um, and it's kind of funny because if Blue Cross Blue Shield had not been on strike, I would have been denied the surgery. How do I know this? Because I got a letter on the 24th telling me that they got the request of this, to have the surgery. Um, on the, they got it on the 14th and that it was going to be denied because it's not a medically necessary surgery. And that this, this documentation takes place on the 22nd. My surgery was on the 20th. Thank you, God, for small miracles. Okay. And I guess, man, it's so weird. I know part of it's the weather, I know, but it's like I could do a pinball game with the way you all are sitting. But we're going to get that growth up. Right? Thank you, Jim. All right, let's bow in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Mother, Being, we come to you today and we pray. We pray, Lord, for those that are in the middle of wars, that you will save lives and bring them hope. We pray for all those that are struggling with homelessness and hunger. And it doesn't just become a focal point this time of year because it's Christmas. It's a problem all year long. We pray today for the school district of Wayne and Westland that you will find a miracle so that no one has to be laid off, programs don't have to be cut, and that the children will not suffer. We put the hope and promises of you on that school district, Lord. We pray for continued comfort and healing for Harry, Henry, that you will touch his body, that he will be able to come home for the holidays. We pray for Kathy and her family 
and all of Harry's family that you will give them strength and comfort and courage during this time. We thank you, Lord, for new babies like Jim and Alvina's new little granddaughter, my little granddaughter, and all the other babies that are being born, Lord, that they will have a happy, healthy life and that you will put hope in their heart. We pray for the children of this church, Lord, whether they come every Sunday or come once a year. We pray for all the children who have ties to St. Paul's, that you will protect them, that you will show them your life, your love, and your hope for them and for the one that will save them. We pray today for Beth that you will hold her up, that you will give her strength to handle the pain, that you will send love to her and around her. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering with the viruses this year. So many are, this season are not doing good between COVID and RSV and the flu and everything else, Lord. We just pray that you will heal those that are sick and protect those that are not yet sick and that they will not get sick. We ask for growth of this church, Lord. We ask that you will bring in the wayward, bring in those that are lost, those that are tired, bring in those that have lost hope so that we can help build them up again. Lord, sometimes our prayers are so deep and so hurtful we can't speak them in loud. So we ask that you will listen as we pray to you in silent prayer. And now, Lord, we close our time of prayer with you by saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and that has been handed down from generation to generation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, now if you join me in hymn number 174, please stand if you're able.
You may be seated. This morning, as we come before the table of God, of Jesus, and we come full of hope, Remember, at that time when they were sitting there at that table, the disciples had hope. They thought that Jesus had come from an earthly kingdom. They had no idea what was about to happen. Not when he started. When he started, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which will be broken for you. And then he took the wine. And he took the goblet and he said, this is my blood, which I will shed for you. And I used the tense will because at that point, it hadn't happened yet, had it? And that's the first that they begin to understand. But God's blood in his body, Jesus gave everything for us. And so now, we will take the bread and take the juice and eat. Now, look around you and see if you have a red hymnal close to you. Has everybody got a red hymnal? Because this next song is in the red hymnal. Notice how cleverly I put the red hymnal in red. Come thou long and what we are expected Jesus, number 79 in the red hymnal, okay? All right. You may stand if you wish.
Today, I ask that you go in peace. May God bless you with a sense of joy and hope. As you go from here today, remember you are the hands and the mouth of Jesus. And give hope to the world. Amen. And now let's have peace. Ring around the rosy. Oh yeah, we didn't do this when you were here, did we? Okay. Man, it's so good to see you, brother. <laughs> that, that brings joy and hope. <laughs> All right, John, we're set. Darling. I have to tell you. Uh oh. You beat me to the punch. I was going to.